Hey, what's going on, my nerds and collectors alike? We're back at it again with another Marvel Legend, this time from the Shang-Chi movie. Today we're taking a look at Wen Wu, or, uh, spoiler her ahead, the Mandarin, the real one. Getting a closer look in here. So you can see he's got some different hands in here. You got the nice Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings logo. Wen Wu from Hasbro. You can see the figure in there with a couple of accessories, little figure parts. On the side of the box, you got a nice piece of art here depicting Wen Wu. Back of the box looks like the same art piece, but uh, bigger. And you have the description. So it says Wen Wu, Shang Chi's father. Wen Wu is the feared leader of the Ten Rings organization, which has lurked in the shadows of the MCU since the very beginning. And of course, they're talking about. And Iron Man 1 when he's captured by the Ten Rings. So you've got your warnings. Not for children under three years. You have the Mr. Hyde Build-A-Figure, which I don't actually plan on completing. But if you do plan to complete this Build-A-Figure, you will need to purchase the whole wave, which includes Shang-Chi, Wen Wu, uh, Zilong, Death Dealer, the Civil Warrior, and Tony Stark AI. On the other side here, you've got the same symbol for Shang-Chi, same art piece. On the bottom of the box, you've got your warnings, legalese, barcodes, unreadables, all that fun stuff. Top of the box, got the Shang-Chi logo again. So let's go ahead and crack them open and see what this guy's about. Alright, so here we have Wen Wu, or the Mandarin, out of his packaging. Getting into some details here. You can see the face sculpt looks very much like the actor, which I will go ahead and admit that I do not know the name of any of the actors in this film. I actually don't know a lot about Shang-Chi at all, but uh, watching the trailer and especially looking at these figures, I definitely am excited for it. I think it'll be a good movie. But uh, I think the face sculpt looks very nice. You've got the nice sculpted hair there, which... Uh, is just a regular black plastic, but when the light hits it, it actually gives it a nice bit of shading detail. So, works in Hasbro's favor. The faces are not as shiny as they usually are, but you can see they still have a little bit of glisten. Usually just when uh, in highlights. So, pretty good, pretty good. As expected of an MCU figure, this guy has tons of sculpted detail all over his body. You can see there the sculpted weave on his outfit there, and then with this blue armor, there's different patterns in it. So you get nice studded etched pattern in there with some belts. On his shoulder, you've got blue with the same kind of style armor there. On that side, there's actually no blue, I'm assuming because of the larger shoulder pad here. On the back, you get some more sculpt. Not a lot of paint on the back, but that's as per usual with Hasbro, so nothing upsetting there. Uh, you get a nice decaled skirt piece here going all the way around. You get nice sculpted detail on his belt buckles there on each side. Get the nice ten rings emblem sculpted onto his belt buckle. And it actually looks like he's wearing Part of a coat of plates, which is a coat with metal plate pieces sewn into it. So that's pretty cool. So he's got some armor on. Going down to his pants there. They look just like regular combat pants with some knee pads on them. Down to some combat boots. And the boots have nice silver detail picked out on these just to add a little bit of spice to them. You can see the rings on his arms. Paint's a little bit sloppy, but... Uh, all in all, it is what it is for a $20 action figure. Not bad. So getting into articulation for this guy. His head is on a dumbbell joint this time. So Hasbro has started integrating more dumbbell joints into the Marvel Legends line. As they have been with the Black Series line for a while now. So even with the dumbbell joint, this guy actually can look up pretty far. Can look down pretty decently. He's got some nice tilt for each side. And 
they've started doing. So you got the dumbbell joint there. And then the base of the neck actually has, it looks like it is connected by a ball joint down at the bottom there, if you can see that. Down at the very bottom. So it gives him a little bit of an extra range, which works very well. So it's seamless. He's got good range with it. It's, not, it's very nice. So getting into his arms here, this arm can go 360. Uh, this arm, due to the shoulder pad, gets stopped right about there. And that's probably as far as you want to go because on a lot of people's figures, you can see there's a little bit of stress marks up in there. That shoulder pad likes to try to tear off, so definitely be careful when articulating his right arm. His left arm raises that far. On the right side, it actually raises up a little bit further, which is interesting. He has bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, which go up all the way, which is very nice since this line is full of kung fu characters. You definitely want a higher range of articulation. His wrists are on a swivel. And then a hinge that goes in and out. He has a diaphragm joint, which crunches forward that far. Crunches back that far. And that also gives you your rotation. And then some tilt. And as expected, this piece is a stiffer plastic, so it does hinder articulation quite a bit. He can kick forward that far. Kicks back that far. Kicks out that far. So that's not great. Soft goods would have been nice to see on here, but then we probably would have lost detail, so... I guess it's a trade-off. I'm sure custom creators on Instagram will probably have a replacement build up for this guy here in a couple weeks or so. So definitely keep an eye out on that. He does have a rotation up on the thigh. And turning this around, you can actually see he has the double jointed knees, which if these weren't hindered, would go up almost all the way. And I do want to point out that he is using the pinless technology on his legs here, but on the arms, he has pins. We've been seeing that a lot from Hasbro. I'm not sure why, and honestly, I'm not too bothered by it. I don't care too, too much about it. The pinless is very nice, but if it's easier for them to use pins for some things, I'm not going to complain. His ankles can move back that far. They go forward that far. So that's very nice. If he had actual range in his legs, you could get him in some decent low poses. And of course he has ankle pivot. So getting into Wen Wu's accessories here, you can see that he has a Kung Fu posed hand, which he does come with two of. So he's got one for each side. He also has a set of dukes. So he's got a fist for each side. And swapping the fist out. He also comes with a set of gripping hands. Which these are all sculpted very nicely. You can see the veins sculpted on the back of his hand there. Even some of the tendons. So, very nice. You get the fingernails picked out. And of course, those are an easy swap. And he also comes with his hook blade, which is sculpted very nicely. You've even got some black picked out there for the grip. Got the spike at the end. And he holds this with relative ease. You just take this sword, slide it down in there, give it a nice twist. And he grips that very nice. He's not letting that go. It's a pretty good tight grip. And even with some limited articulation, you can, of course, get him in some decent poses here. 
So that still looks cool. Getting into some comparisons here, since uh, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say that this guy is a villain. Whether we'll see him as the main villain in the movie or not is yet to be seen. We know that Death Dealer is also in the movie. And in the trailer, it looks like he is going to be the primary villain. But comparing him to some other highly agile and hand-to-hand -hand combative kind of villains, here he is with Taskmaster from the Black Widow movie, and Eric Killmonger in the Golden Jaguar suit. Taking those guys out of here. And here he is with King T'Chaka, which in my opinion is the primary villain of the Black Panther movie, considering he is basically the person who set off that whole escapade. Getting him out of here. And we'll go ahead and compare him with Deadpool, because Deadpool likes his swords, so why not? So as you can see, uh, it looks like Hasbro is starting to make the heads of their figures a little bit larger, trying to get into uh, some better proportions there. So it looks a little weird next to other MCU figures, but all in all, the figure standing alone looks perfectly fine. Um, I do want to say, so for my overall opinion, I do like the figure a lot. There's a lot of detail into it. Um, the articulation areas are kind of disappointing. But he does come with a good amount of accessories, and he looks great. So, even with the hindrance and articulation, I still think it's worth a pickup. I actually found mine out in the wild for once, today at a Walmart. So, uh, that was actually pretty nice, because in my area, you don't really see figures out in the wild anymore. And one final thing, I want to say that this channel, and all of the content on it, is not for children under 13 years old. So, if you're under 13, wait until you're 13 and come back, I guess. Or, I guess, ask your parents to watch this with you. Sorry, guys. Uh, hope everyone's doing great. Stay safe out there, guys.